fly up here, uh, but we'll find out. Hopefully this goes well. First time doing it, so bear with me, folks. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and bring out our panelists to the stage. How about that? All right. Yeah. We're going to do this uh, wrestling style, if you guys don't mind. Yeah, we got a lot of cheers. First up, please welcome to the stage the creator of Tekken, the one and only Harada Son and Michael. <laughs> Next up, you know him as. WWE superstar Xavier Woods. I do. So I'll first uh, translate Harada if you're not aware of how we did this, and then I'll add my own response to it. So Harada was just saying in, when he was in elementary school that era, uh, you know, superstars like Mike Tyson were a huge influence on him growing up and being interested in martial arts. Uh, but also, he was into yacht racing when he was uh, in, in school, and so that element of competitive nature and wanting to, that strong will to win against other people was probably what mostly influenced him to do what he's doing today. Uh, for myself, you know, I grew up in the 80s as one of the kids watching uh, The Karate Kid and all the martial arts. Yeah. Uh, so I started karate from a, a young age, and that really got me interested in martial arts. Uh, but it was really, I think, when I studied in, in Japan in the late 90s when the arcade culture was at its max, and you had all these fighting games out all the time. And I was the first one of you guys, you know, a fan of uh, various series. Uh, and that gradually led to a position in Namco to create tech, uh, to work on Tekken. Awesome stuff. Uh, for me, so I was a kid who was obsessed with professional wrestling. I lived it, breathed it, every single day that I could watch it, I was obsessed with it. And when I realized that I could possibly put on my shiny pants, and I could be 
float around the world and someone else is gonna pay for it. I have all the crazy experiences that I might not have otherwise in life. I said, I have to do this. And so that's when I started amateur wrestling and got to track and field and football and played all these sports so I could turn into an athlete, a real athlete, so that I could eventually become a professional wrestler. Now, uh, that will be 20 years. Wow. Wow. Chris? Uh, good afternoon for everyone. For me, I started to play sports in school. I really enjoy, I play handball, soccer, I play basketball. And then I never think of being a fighter. I never had a dream, I was a kid. And then one guy saw me play handball and he talked to me after and said, I think you can be a great fighter. I said, I don't like fighting. He said, no, come to the gym, you're gonna like. So I started training shoot the box gym. In six months, I started training, uh, I did my first fight. I lost my first fight, but I see how much I have inside me. I say, man, I wanna finish the fight, do my best I can, and here I am. 18 years doing this, the only grand slam shape in sports, and they love it. I love it. I have Amazing. Yeah. Oh, man. I started fighting um, when I was 12. I was in a reformatory for boy, and then one day Muhammad Ali came to visit us. And I said, wow. This right thing here, he came out. I said, I want to be like him. Then a couple of months later, I watched Roberto Duran fight Shit Radio in 1980. I said, this is what I want to do in my life. And this is why I'm here now. Wow. Uh, what was it about, you know, obviously, you know, besides the game Muhammad Ali, but what was it about him as a boxer that inspired you as well to want to pursue that craft? Um, as soon as he went in, everybody went crazy. Wow. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's incredible stuff. Uh, now, obviously, uh, you know, there has been a, a, a lot of like evolution growth, obviously, in the craft over the course of the years, right? Whether it's, you know, making the game and how advanced games have become, or professional wrestling and how far that has gone. Same thing for MMA and boxing here. Uh, so I think uh, what will be interesting here is, you know, how, how, do you, how do you view, I guess, your start? If you can go back, and say like, hey, I would like to try something different. I guess we'll start with our, our, our panels over here real fast, and then we'll talk to the devs after. Uh, Woods, I'll start with you if you don't mind. Um, if you can go back and be like, hey, I want to try and make some changes here. <laughs> you know, maybe protect my body a little bit more. What were some of the things that you kind of like pulled away from your experience that you would love to go back and tell your former self? I don't know, I feel like that's always a weird question because I feel like the, the things that you did, the mistakes that you made, have turned you into the person that you currently are today. Awesome. You get to shape yourself. And so I don't, I don't know what I would tell myself. Maybe don't get as down on yourself as you used to because doing something like professional wrestling, it's, it's one of the hardest things in the world to become successful at because the field is so huge. There's so many people that are involved in it. Um, and there have been times where I just didn't think that I could keep going. I didn't think that I was gonna be as good as, as I wanted to be. There's times where I didn't think I could be as technical or as sound or as strong or as fast, all those things. Um, but you push through and you persevere and that's how you become a champion, you know? Um, so I probably just tell myself to give myself more grace. Mm. Stay in the path. Yeah. Okay, Chris, what about for you? Because obviously, you know, starry-eyed young kid, getting opportunities, someone watching you play handball, and you're like, you can fight. <laughs> so what happened there? No, for me, I feel like it's a gift to be a fighter. I think uh, I never had a plan, but I was at least, I was pre prepared for something, didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. So I think all the sport at 12 years old to 19, I really sport to make who I am. And of course, I stay a long time undefeated, but I believe like when you get a loss, my first loss, I learn a lot. Yeah. So make me improve and get experience of who I am today. And I, I think it didn't change anything, you know? I think everything I've through, like you said, you learn for a lesson, learn mistakes, and you get a better and you better fight. Makes sense, makes sense. Yes. Mr. Tyson? I don't know. Um, I was hard on myself when I was fighting. Everything was fighting, my whole life was fighting. I had nothing else, nothing. I had to be the best ever. And that's what I just wanted to be. I just wanted to be one I am today. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, I see for, for you guys, you know, having worked on tech in for as, as, as long as you guys have now, I guess uh, same question applies, you know, like lessons you've learned now that you know you would like to try and uh, you wish you could go back and implement, or is it like the panelists? Is it just 
you know, stay on the path. あの、我々のゲーム開発ってのはもともとあのすごい え、状態になってます。だから、ここの会場にいるみんなが例えば、マイクタイソンで喧嘩してくれっていう、パッと本当に一斉に言っちゃうと、今日社長とかも来てるし、会社に。みんな言うこと聞かざるを得なくなっち
been in quite a few games. Obviously, one of my personal favorites of all time, Punch Out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, that was many years ago. That was such a, a turning point, I think, in, in, in games history, where you'd see an individual, uh, a celebrity, an athlete, be on the cover of a video game. How was that experience for you? Was it surreal, or was it just get back to work, folks, on the fight? At the time, it was too geeky for me. Oh. <laughs> but, but now, what is it? I've never played a video game before. Okay, fair. It, 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 it gave me a game. I've never played before in my life. Yeah. I played the game probably twice in my life. I like the game where you're shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I had expected, but I'm not mad about it. So that's fantastic. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, you know, how, for, for you both here, Michael, as well as for Um, you know, how do you feel like uh, Fight has changed over the course of the, uh, of the years, especially in, in tech, because you guys have incorporated so many different styles of combat in the game. Uh, so I, I, I'm curious to know, like, how, how did that come to be? Was that always the original intention for Tekken? And, and are we going to see even more of that down the line? More of that flourish? More of that pizzazz when it comes to the styles? So, I think we have a lot of different games that we have to use. In the case of the game, we have to use the style of Tekken, 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 the style of ほとんど<笑> So Rado was just saying that uh, for us it was all about we have this tech in this game and how to actually implement the fighting styles and so it works within the game rules and the systems. And so you know it started off as kind of uh, how it would play out if you had two different martial arts uh, styles you know, kind of clashing and, and to battle each other. But then you know somewhere along the way we started having uh, little dinosaurs and. Uh, and, uh, there was a sound at one point, but uh, that got axed uh, during development. So, uh, but it's all about how do we make those actually uh, look like they're the real thing, but at the same time play uh, in the game without breaking too many rules, etc. Um, and personally, just looking at add on to that, I, I think everyone here is pretty young, but when we were growing up, there wasn't MMA yet, so there was a lot of discussion about, well, what if this Taekwondo person fought karate or, or whatever, or boxing? Uh, no one had an answer for that until the MMA came around. So, I mean, now everyone here is so used to watching on TV, but for us, gaming was a way to kind of uh, settle those disputes. So, Do you feel like that was um, challenging to figure out? Yes, I, I think so. I mean, because, uh, well, there's a game, so you're looking at a screen, right? You can't, uh, in Tekken is a 3D game, so it does change the camera setup, but it's not like real life. Uh, and it, it is that uh, all these flashing moves that maybe uh, work in, in real life, maybe uh, they need to be changed to be faster or slower, or to hit different areas inside the game. So there's all these different rules that we have to uh, kind of make sure they work when we're doing this. So it is uh, quite a, for a lot of work involved in it. Yeah, well, I think we uh, all thank you for putting in that work. So, <laughs> let's greet you. I'm curious about a particular fight that, and this will be for our three panels over there, a particular fight that changed you in, in some way, um, or, or changed how you approach a fight, uh, or you know, just things in, like life in general. Liz, we'll start with you. Any any moments in, in your career that stick out to you? Uh, yeah, so if you're unfamiliar with it, we have a match called the Hell in a Cell. So, huge cage placed over the ring. You're stuck inside. So, it was a tag team match. Me and one of my partners, Biggie. Uh, yeah! yeah. 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 You're not going to do that. New Day! Yeah. 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 Uh, so, it's easy against the Usos. And at one point, uh, yeah. 
I get, I get handcuffed and my hands are strung up over the ring post and the Usos are on either side of me holding kendo sticks. And then, exactly what you think happened, happens. They destroyed my rib of kendo sticks. I still have scars all over my stomach to prove it. And that was a, <laughs> a crucial moment in my life where I said, maybe I need to start hitting people harder. <laughs> so a lot of stuff came after that match. Um, but, but it's very true. When you go through something uh, extremely painful like that, you look at what you're doing very differently. Yeah, I, I, I cannot imagine, so. And I don't want to imagine any time to ambitiously attack with kendo sticks. Uh, uh, Chris, what are for you? You know, when I, f I did my first fight in America, I didn't speak in English, and and when I, I was fighting the girl, and I saw she drop, and I said, okay, I win. I run to the cage and you look at when and when and when and then I look at my team, you didn't go back, you didn't go back. You know what I mean? I want to fight. And then when I look at the free free look at me and say, no, I didn't stop, I have to stop. So I have to kick it over again to fight. So if I didn't stop, it can Yeah. Incredible. Mike? I'm with my my second ten round fight, the guy wasn't that great of a fighter really, mm -hmm. but he hit me in the stomach a couple of times and it hurt. And I wanted to stop, but I didn't and I won. And um, I was proud that I didn't stop my four back, but I couldn't walk for three days. I lost <laughs> And ever since then, just trying to avoid body shots. <laughs> no, not really, but I know I can take them now. And it's also <laughs> So uh, I, I, I'm kind of curious, how, how do you guys see, um, like, and Mike, maybe we'll start with you here, how do you see fight, like, or like combat, I guess, evolving over the next few years, especially, you know, advancements in technology and stuff? I'm, I'm genuinely curious from your perspective, having seen so much and seen boxing evolve to the point where it's at right now, uh, how do you see it potentially evolving or not evolving in the next five to ten years? Uh, Mike, let's start with Mike and Chris. Fighting in all aspects now because of technology is safer. Yeah. Fighting safer now. Fighters have um, big opportunities to make more money now, which they didn't have when, prom when promoters really have had them in slave contracts and they couldn't do anything outside of boxing unless the promoter got that as well. So um, boxers and fighters in general have more opportunities now. From a financial perspective, from an entrepreneurial perspective, you're able to do more now than you were before. Because before it was just, it was typically slavery yeah. back then. From the beginning to the 80s, it was pretty much slavery. And do you see it, you know, getting better as well? I see, I see, I see most of the fighters um, more in control of their career. They have lawyers. Yeah. You know, we handle that career instead of managers. Mm. You know, so it's different now. So now, if he wants to fight. It, I make a negotiation for a fight, and I go to the damn man, so don't go to his lawyer. Yeah. And I think if you're a fighter, that's all you need. You need to train on a lawyer. You don't need to hang on. And... That's all you need now. Yeah. Before, before you need a, a manager, 20 hang on guy, and this and that 30 girl. That's all you need now. Is, uh, a train on a lawyer. <laughs> Your life is simple. Yeah. Real simple. Yeah. And Chris, what are you? You know, the first I think is the technology help you be connected with your fan. You know, you can be connected then, they can see you training, they can see your day, this is really nice, then then it follow you up to all your camp and the way to the, to the fight, they really feel connected with you, I think it's one of the things. I think it helped at least for recovery. Like, um, I went to Colombia for the stand sales, uh, I feel Eric, Chamber, they really helped you, long career for the fighter. And, and the sport grow, you know, technology, like the kids now, you see them training, like I started in my time. So, and then you see before the beginner MMA, you see them fight each other, judo against wrestling, and they're like, oh, white boxing. But now you see the, the kids training everything. Yeah. They do everything. Six years old, then I want to take down you, try to meet you, like, 
Now, I think this is the technology and they really grow the sport and grow everything for better. Wow, amazing, amazing stuff. And uh, what's it for you for, uh, for, for pro wrestling? Because it has been a significant advancement all over, yeah. you know, from the olden days of the territories all the way to now. Yeah, it's definitely uh, something that, that Chris hit on uh, with being able to connect with people mm -hmm. that you may not have been capable to connect with. Otherwise, recovery is a huge one. She also said that. Um, but I think really it's just being able to go back and break down the tape. That's something that I think has had a lot of advancements. Because obviously you can go back and watch before, but now with the technologies that we have, you can see so many fine, fine uh, little, little details that you wouldn't have been able to understand before. And now you have people who are so well-versed in training you and how to deal with something so small that to an outsider, to an outsider's eye, it might not seem like a big deal. I'll take a left step instead of a right step here and it's gonna completely change what this move looks like. Completely change what your body does and how it reacts. And I tore my PCL during a match one time. So that's the ligament that keeps your shin from sliding behind your knee. And so finishing the match, you know, getting done and then figuring out, oh, this is gone now and I just don't have one. But being able to go back and watch that tape and sit with these educated trainers, people who are able to teach me how to now uh, build the muscle around that ligament so I don't have to go have surgery. There's just ways to, 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 to keep going, essentially, that you didn't have before. Wow, amazing, amazing stuff. And, and uh, Michael and Haradasan, if you guys don't mind, um, how has you know where do you see fighting games going in the next five to ten years it is a loaded question for sure uh and i'm genuinely curious like the advancements in that field so yeah for reserves so it's a double uh so Rod was just saying that uh, it's probably drastically changed in the way that uh, people consume it, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. At first it was just people who were having fun with the game, playing as a friend. Maybe they're not so knowledgeable about the game, there's bug mashing, etc., but having a good time. And then with the advent of all this technology, uh, you have streamers. So some people don't even buy the game sometimes and they just know it because they've seen their favorite streamer. Uh, so we're really focusing more on um, the various ways to enjoy our game. So whether that's uh, what we make or whether that's what some of the creators make and their videos related to our game, mm -hmm. whether it's a big tournament or, or stream or whatever, there's so many ways to enjoy the game. And uh, we really have been focus, focusing on uh, tailoring the game to those experiences to enhance all of those tournaments. Oh, awesome stuff there. Now, um, obviously, you know, we all deal with different kinds of perseverance and, 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 and whatnot. Mike, you talked about getting punched in the gut multiple times, was viciously attacked by the Usos with kendo sticks. Hate to see it. You'll get the back one day, I believe in it, but. Um, but so let's talk about uh, like perseverance and resilience and, and, and getting back into it. Has there been a time in your guys' lives where you really felt down and out, where you felt like, and, and Mike, maybe we start with you on this one if you don't mind, uh, where you had to pick yourself back up. You said that you know you kind of were really hard on yourself when you were younger, but was there ever a time where you were in a position where you're like, I need to turn this around and get back to where I once was? Have you ever felt like that before? I just always had a great deal of belief in myself. Even when I was down and out, I just believed in myself. I never stopped believing in myself. My ego helped a little too. <laughs> um, I just refused to give up. I refused. Um, I want to be up more than anybody wants me to be down. And that's why I believe I've been successful most of my life. Incredible. Were you ever nervous before any of these fights? All the time. From my first one to my last one. You're not nervous. You're not a fighter. Hey, you heard from my Tyson there, folks. For you as well, I had a particular time where you had to, had to really pick yourself up, get back into it. You know, every fight you, like uh, Mike say, you have some butterflies in your belly, of course you do. You, but you don't know, make you sharp. You don't know, make you sharp in the fight, be ready for any situation. And I, I believe like every fight I have a challenge, I learn something, you know, like control your emotion. You fight yourself every day. Even the camp, sometimes you're tired, you don't want to go, but you say, no, I need to go, I need to be away, I need to train. But every day is one body, you know, in your mind. You have to be there, you have, even if you're tired, you train. If I want to eat something, but I'm on diet for the fight, so it's a, every day one body for the fight. So, 
and you you just have prepared and they have faith, my right? faith, you will help me um, overcome every day, every step in my career. Awesome. What's for you, my friend? Uh, a fusion where I tore my Achilles, my left foot, and uh, that was the point where I was trusting to be able to, to like walk or run again. Um, so it got pretty down. I was in my basement for like two months, just like away from everything, you know. And I think at those points, it's really hard to kind of kick yourself back into motion. But um, really, like I said earlier, trying to keep your eyes on the prize and see like, what is it that I want out of my life? And having that honest conversation with yourself, that is what helped me pick myself back up off the ground, yeah. start working again, and get to the point where I could come back to wrestling. Um, but it's hard. Yeah. None of this is easy at all. If it was easy, everybody would do it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but like Mike said, being able to believe in yourself is something that money cannot buy. It's like the most precious thing on the planet, whatever it is that you do. Yeah, ain't that the truth, man. Ain't that the truth. And uh, and, and for our devs here, for uh, uh, Michael as well as karate um, yeah, you know, obviously game development, we all know, is hard. <laughs> but uh, particular times in, in your careers that you've had to face that resilience, had to face that adversity to, to get that over the line, what was that like for you? そうですね。あの、もう毎日毎日 so Rob was just saying that uh, you know every day has its challenges uh, in game development, especially uh, currently. Uh, so there's always something that he's facing. But if he had to pick one, uh, so that you all know about that he hasn't uh, overcome yet, it's uh, there was this game called uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Yeah. <laughs> We were supposed to release one called Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> the progress has been at 30% for maybe the past 10 years, and that's uh, <laughs> something he's been able, unable to overcome so far. Wow. And what about you, Mike? For me, uh, I guess it goes for everyone, but uh, COVID, the whole situation there, my, my father passed away right at the beginning of that, so that was a really tough time for me. Um, what got me through was just working on a team of really skilled people, uh, and being, uh, you know, kind of pushed to, 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 to do better, I suppose. And, and then that finally led into when we started to get back to normal and see the fans at the uh, tournaments and see everyone enjoying the game. And that's really what gives the Rada and me the power to do what we do, is to see everyone out there uh, enjoying what we make. Because without that, working in a vacuum is just so tough. Yeah. But when you see the results and see everyone really uh, love what you do, it, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, well, I think the results have to speak for themselves if you got a packed house, so. So, uh, this is something I've always been genuinely curious about. Uh, for, and this will be for uh, Michael and, and Harada-san. Um, how, how did you guys collect all the different, like, the information for the different styles of, of combat that we have in Tekken? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, bears don't know how to fight, right? Unless it's bears beating Battlestar Black, but outside of that, but, uh, that's a good reference in case anyone got it. Uh, but yeah, I kind of want to get that thought. Like, how's that process like? Is it is it mocap? Is it you guys just in the lab? What what is that? あの、あの最初であの、僕らあの、昔からそうなんですよ。ビデオ見に行ったり、本当にもう試合を見に行ったり、で、見に実際に、で、次にあの、その選手たちで、2コンタクトして、え、実際にリングでとか、あの、ル
手でデータを直してしまうのでモーションキャプチャーはやるんですけどあれ作業を効率化するためのもので僕らは基本的にそうやって実際体験から学んだことを画面上でこう一つ一つ手作りで、えー、作り上げていくというやり方をやります。Well, back in the day, there was、uh, good videos of different martial arts that were maybe、uh, kind of eccentric or unique,、uh, and that's how it started. But then actually finding some of those、uh, practitioners and going to meet them. Farad mentioned he, he actually got、uh, choked out by one of the more famous professors at the time.、Uh, so you know, actually experiencing it in this manner. And then、uh, the way we incorporate these different styles is obviously motion capture is a way to kind of、uh, a shortcut, you know, to, to get a lot of the data in there. But at the end of the day, you have to tailor it. You have、uh, our、uh, animators, et cetera, kind of retouching on the detail. They're sometimes making it from scratch, depending on the, the movement.、Uh, but there's a lot of that. And、uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a collection of very eccentric martial arts. So for me personally, also,、um, you know, Tekken 3 was kind of the pinnacle before Tekken 7. And、uh, that was the, the sales forecast we could never really go past. And I was looking hard at what the answer was, and I noticed so many people, Tekken was all about real martial arts, you know,、uh, Eddie Kakura, and then it's all about、oh, so amazing, yeah, yeah. Jin and Karate, et cetera. So we kind of shifted back to actually try to put more emphasis on that. So you saw in the later times we had、uh, Wing Chun.、Uh, my personal favorite one is Mark,、uh, Muay Thai. I've been practicing for, you know, over 10 years or so.、Uh, and then Okinawa Karate. So we noticed that people, that was one thing that. Although they love the gameplay,、uh, that is an element that we can't ignore. So it's、yeah. uh, especially more important in recent years. Yeah, yeah it's definitely evolved、uh, quite a bit. I guess the big question is you know, how, much, how much for Woods to do mocap for the next game? You know? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? We tried, there was an attempt, bless you.、Uh, <laughs> um, but obviously,、uh, you know, the, the evolution of, of, of combat, fight, has not only just、uh, taken over in, in video games, but it's also been obviously in film, cinema, TV shows, things like that. And, and I'm actually curious、uh, for, for the three of you guys here,、um, and Woods will start with you,、uh, because It feels like you've seen so many different styles. Obviously, you mentioned Wing Chun, very, very、uh, prominent in, in Kung Fu movies. Anything that had inspired you as a kid and also kind of like influenced a little bit of your style nowadays from movies in the past that had a profound impact? Yeah, so as a kid,、uh, I was obsessed with Jackie Chan's movies. Watching all of my just literally obsessed. So, the only thing I'll say, fight scene in this movie. Called Wheels on Wheels.、Oh, yeah. It's Jackie Chan versus Benny the Jet. Benny the Jet has Jackie Chan up against the table. He throws, a, I believe it's called a spinning roundhouse. Excuse me if I'm in the back. That Jackie ducks it, but there's a stain of candles behind Jackie, and Benny swings his kick so fast that it blows out the candles. I remember seeing that as a kid and running around the house, losing my mind. <laughs> And ever since then, I was just in love with it. And so seeing fight evolve in movies like it has, so movies like The Raid, movies like The Night Comes for Us, that whole crew is doing fight choreography on a different level.、Yeah. And so it's, just, it's awesome to see. But it is really inspirational because that's the kind of stuff that all of us love. We're in this room because that's what we're into.、Yeah. We're still to see it in such in, in pop culture everywhere. Incredible. And,、uh, and, and Chris, for you as well, any, any films that kind of stood out to you, or maybe even something that you were in as well? No, I was training for Seattle for my next Alaska boxing fight, and I had the opportunity to go to the Bruce Lee、uh, Craig. And it was really nice, it was really inspiring me, not just that he's be a movie star, but his lifestyle. Yeah. You know, and it was really special for me, so I won that. Yeah, amazing. And, and,、uh, and for Mike, you know, I, I have to ask because it's one of my favorite Mike, movies of all time. Mike, too. When I'm there, I got to watch his fight with my dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.、Um, It didn't breathe. <laughs> when, you were, when you were squaring it up with Donnie Yen,、uh, how was that experience like? Did you, did you feel like you learned anything from it?、Uh, even after all these years, or did you just get your head? I was having a good time. I was,、um, I'm a great fan of the Shaw Brothers. You know, they got to jump 100 feet in the air and fly. So I was living、um, um, my fans there and telling my best life. And, 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 and but what was that, I guess?、Uh, You know, even for yourself, are there any inspirations in film that you know, kind of influenced you even in that movie? Well, all the Shaw brothers, all the Shaw brothers. All of that. 
Like they jump a hundred feet in the air. Yeah. And sometimes um, they can go in your gut and pull your guts out. <laughs> Skin where you can't penetrate your skin with swords and bats and axes. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. Why did he been on this? That's another rule. I've learned a lot about you today. I'm actually quite. <laughs> uh, now, um, you know, I guess for for uh, for us on as well as uh, Michael, you know, how have you guys taken Tekken and and molded it to something that is easily digestible? Right? How can a person who who doesn't necessarily understand, you know, combat sports, I guess, really, I mean, how, how is that challenge like for you to make it as simple as possible for people of all ages who would just be able to enjoy this? で、スーパースローモーションで演出まで入れて、え、時間まで上ませて、え、なんかなんかみんな頭の中で起きているスマホ先に出たような、そのエイガのシーンとか、漫画の人アニメのあの、かっこいいシーンみたいなのを、ゲーム
Um, uh, probably the, the first time that we won the tag team titles. It, it solidified a moment in time for us because so many people told us what we were doing wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to be anything that the crowd caught on to. It wasn't going to be anything that had any legs. And so winning the tag team titles uh, in that arena that used to completely boo us, they would say New Day sucks for ever. Things started to change and they said New Day rocks and everybody kind of accepted us. And that's when in my, in my, in my soul, it solidified that we made the right choice. Mm. Woo! Okay, it does not come off. Okay, it does. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, buddy. Um, and and uh, for, for both of you as well, Michael and then Karazan, like, you know, those, the, the achievements, right? And, and Tekken has had so many over the course, but it doesn't necessarily have to be Tekken related. It could just be to your field as well, or just life in general. And whoever wants to go first. So, I know. もういろんな賞とかを本当にたくさんもらってあの、いい瞬間でたくさんあってで、あのユーザーの方々からも最近は直接ね、えっといろいろあの評価してもらえるもうそれが僕らにとって一番あの輝いてる瞬間ですけど
Christine, and I obviously want to thank Rod, Tom, Ivan, Murray, Go to Christmas, our favorite